So I saw this Italian horror movie from 1971 called The Strange Vice of Mrs. Ward on Shudder, and I just have to talk about it. The Strange Vice of Mrs. Ward stars George Hilton, Edwidge Finish, and is directed by Sergio Martino. What is up guys? This is not like a requested review or anything. It's not one that was on my schedule. It's just an impulsive type deal, I guess, because I was browsing through Shutter the other night, just looking for something to watch. Gave myself a night off. And I just, I, I veered right over to the, uh, the Italian horror section. And this poster just caught my eye. It was The Strange Vice of Mrs. Ward. That title alone sounds like an Italian horror, like a Jallo title anyway. But it was under the curator's choice, and usually those are choices of the, the people that run Shudder. And so I thought, hey, I'll give this one a shot, you know, curator's choice. And after watching this movie, I felt the need to watch it again. Uh, it was just that um, interesting to me. So I ended up watching it the next day again, and I felt I felt the need to talk about it. And you know what? It's just another Italian horror title that I can add to that playlist. And guys, one thing I'm starting to notice about myself is... Italian horror is quickly becoming like my favorite genre now. It's the one that constantly draws me in. Not since slashers have I been so like enticed uh, by a subgenre of horror. There's just something about Italian horror that's just, well, it just has its own flavor. It's just so different than American horror. But one thing that really jumped out about this genre and specifically this movie too, I can see the influence that this movie and, you know, other Italian horror movies have on American cinema. Specifically with, like, Quentin Tarantino. I saw shots in this movie that automatically made me think of, like, Tarantino. Brian De Palma. Even, like, Carpenter. They're, they're, Carpenter has even stated that movies like Deep Red have influenced him. Around that time, a lot of directors were kind of uh, feeding off of each other anyway. Argento fed off of like George Romero. So it was a give and take type profession back then. But this movie really, really just caught my eye and it's a little different than every other Italian horror film that I've seen. It sure it has a lot of those flavors that we get from Italian horror. You know, it has that giallo feel with the killer, with the black gloves, with the black hat and all that stuff. But there's a different story wrapped around that killer in this movie. Just the characters really jumped out at me more than most Italian horror movies. So anyway, let's get into this. This will be a spoiler review, but I won't break out the big spoiler stuff because this is a twist ending type of movie until like at the end of the review. So I'll give you a warning. So at least you can stay until that part because I'm sure that there are a lot of my viewers out there that have not seen this movie, but I got to talk about that twist at the end. So anyway, first off, quick plot synopsis. Our main character in the movie is Julie, played by Edwidge Finish. She is married to this guy, Neil, and there are definitely cracks in the relationship. It seems like one of those marriages that um, isn't perfect at all. You know, she married this guy to get away from this other guy who is more of a bad boy by the name of Jean. <laughs> <laughs> in the beginning of the movie you can see she has this dream about Jean and it's violent and sexual all at the same time it's inside this wooded area and actually just correcting myself I don't think this was a dream I think this actually happened and it was just like when she was with this guy but they had a very tumultuous relationship but she was really attracted to him she has this thing with blood and it's even stated in the movie that it can repel her, but it can also attract her. So she has different reactions to blood throughout the movie. Neil is really her safety net though. That's why she got away from Jean. She went to Neil so that way she didn't feel the urge to go back to Jean. But it's obvious that she doesn't love the guy. So then this other guy comes along by the name of George. George, his cousin is Carol. Carol is like her best friend and Carol introduces George to Julie. And George lays it on super thick to Julie. Good looking guy. And she's not happy with her husband. And of course, sparks fly between the two and you know what happens. Plus this movie really has like a 60s free love type of feel to it, even though it came out in 71. There's 60s 
all over this movie, actually. So that decade really bleeds into this movie and probably a lot of movies from the early 70s. So there's like this sexual tug of war, push and pull between these characters. While all this is happening, there is this killer going around, uh, slasher style, killing all these victims along the way. And so it's weird to have two different plots going at the same time and they both feel like main plots, but they intertwine somewhere along the way. You know they are. Now let's explore a little bit more of that attraction to blood that Julie has. There are a few scenes in this movie that tie right into that and, and a few of them are like dreams. She has these dreams uh, where the character Jean, it, you know, he's like attacking her, he cuts her, but then he eventually has sex with her. So she's attracted to this violence, the blood. But then there's other scenes in the movie where she sees blood and she has like a really bad psychotic negative reaction to it. So much so that she goes into shock, she passes out. So you never know what kind of reaction she's going to have when she sees blood. And really I think the blood just kind of represents these negative attractions, these guys that she has in her life. And, uh, you know, these guys are not good for her at all, uh, be it George, be it J uh, Jean. And really even Neil, uh, if you look at it from a different angle, because Neil isn't like a sexual type thing for her. She, he's more of a comfort type thing for her, but she doesn't belong with the guy. Now, jumping into the filmmaking aspect of this movie, I fell in love with Sergio Martino. This is the first movie I've saw of his, but I love his style of directing. And there's a lot of variety to play with. Uh, in this, of course, you're going to see those Italian horror stamps, uh, like, you know, the, the fast zoom-ins with the camera and everything. You're going to see the, the mix of languages. You'll see some people speaking in English and some people speaking in their native language. That it might have been you in place of Carol. Naturally. But I can't go into hiding. You mean that's not important to you? I don't know, George. You know, it's a hodgepodge, uh, and I watched the English version of this. You can watch, I believe, the Italian version, too, if you buy the Blu-ray, which I definitely plan on ordering the Blu-ray, like, immediately. This is definitely one I want to add to my collection, but I just love the way he directs his films. There's a few scenes in this movie that really stick out to me, uh, like the one scene at the end of the movie where she sees the blood and she has this reaction, and the camera just kind of frantically pans around her her face you know it just it's just a lesson in different ways to capture an emotion through the lens and Sergio Martino in my mind was like an expert at it uh, you know there's another like stalking scene in this parking structure where it's just like completely black and the light really just focuses on just s uh, certain sections of the frame <laughs> And it's just really interesting to look at. I love camera techniques that think outside the box. And this movie came out in 1971, and it's directed so much better than movies that come out today. I'm not saying all movies, but like 99.99% of movies that come out today aren't directed uh, as interestingly as this movie is. Now let's talk about uh, Edwidge Finish. She is pretty much considered the Jallo goddess. You know, she's been in quite a few Jallo films. This is the first movie I've seen of hers, but automatically she just has a striking presence. It's obvious she's a very, very gorgeous woman. But I really love the way she tapped into the character, Julie. This is a character that, that's pretty layered actually, and, and there's a lot of emotions that she goes through in this movie. And I think Edwards does a great job handling all those emotions. Also, Italian horror films are known for nudity, but this one I could really file it into like the erotic horror uh, subgenre. Maybe that's why I wore my Basic Instinct t-shirt, but I would say even uh, movies like Basic Instinct are influenced by movies like this because there's a lot of big twists in it, but also sex plays a major part in this. She has an affair with uh, George, but she also has this relationship, this past relationship with Jean. And so there's like sex scenes in the dreams. Uh, there are the scenes with George quite a few scenes actually throughout this but it doesn't get in the way of the movie i mean like why would it get in the way right but I, you know there's an argument to be made that you don't really need nudity in in certain horror stories it doesn't hurt that it's edward finish what was the point i was trying to make again back to the review <laughs>
But I'm not saying like every scene of nudity has a direct uh, influence on the actual story. No, Sergio is definitely guilty of embellishing a little bit with other characters like the character Carol. Uh, there's one of these deaths in the shower, very similar to like the psycho death scene, but you know, it's, it's definitely gratuitous. Now the scenes with the killer are actually pretty interesting too. And they do a good job of completely concealing the guy and not really knowing who it could be. It's a complete guessing game. And it opens up with a scene where the killer uh, picks up this girl and, you know, they're about to have sex and he just kills her. And Jallo films have a different way of handling violence than American films. And the first scene in this movie really lays that out for you. But most of the kill scenes are pretty violent and pretty realistic in this. They don't really show like the knife intrusion. There's definitely some more style over substance, but you still see a lot of blood, you know, blood being thrown uh, at surfaces, but still very effective. A lot of it comes down to like the lighting too, you know, and the shadows and all that stuff that really can sell like a kill scene, especially in Italian horror films. Now, we're going to get into some spoilery talk here because this is a whodunit. This is a twist type of movie. Most Jallo films are whodunits anyway. And I'm going to be honest, like most of the ones that I watch, I usually don't even remember who the killer is 10 minutes after because it's more about the, the journey than the ending of the story. You know, I'm ju I just enjoy the journey in these movies more than anything. And I think that's a good thing because they're rewatchable. Like I could continually watch movies like Tenebrae over and over and over again and not really even care who the killer ends up being. But this is like, I would call it like a Scooby-Doo type ending. It's a big twist, okay? So anyway, you've been warned about spoilers. The big reveal here was more of like just an insurance type thing uh, and an inheritance type thing. You have Neil in cahoots with George, who's also in cahoots with Jean. So it's like all three of these guys are against Julie in this movie. And they're not doing it to, to get back at Julie. They're doing it for money, which is kind of shallow if you ask me. They did it while all these killings were going on to use that as a cover, to blame it on the actual killer. But the killer ends up uh, being killed by one of his victims before they can actually take out Julie. And so then they try to set it up like it's a suicide. But it's just one of those endings where it's just like reveal after reveal after reveal, you know? Like, I would have swore that Julie was dead when she suffocated to death in that kitchen. But then this doctor comes along and he's trying to resuscitate her and then it cuts immediately to her being dead. So immediately that was a red flag for me anyway. Like, wait, hold on, there, that cut was a little bit too abrupt. And of course it comes around full circle that he was able to save her and they told uh, Neil and George that she actually did die. <laughs> <laughs> so that way they could catch them red-handed. But it's not one of those twist endings that's going to really just blow you away or anything, you know? To me, it's kind of a forgettable ending, but I love the movie so much. I love the directing style so much. I liked Julie as a character. And, and you know it's a good thing when you really don't want a character to die, and I didn't want her to die. And that's really saying something, too, because she wasn't faithful to her husband at all. But you knew from the beginning that this wasn't the guy for her. She was really just a tortured soul. And nine times out of 10, you're not gonna like a character like that, but there is just this aura to um, Edward Finish that comes across on camera. This vulnerability, and it works. So anyway, guys, I'm giving this a super high purchase worth. I really enjoyed the hell out of this movie. I can't wait to buy it. And I'm glad I got to tell you guys about it. It's called The Strange Vice of Mrs. Ward, which is the weirdest freaking uh, name for a horror movie I've ever heard of, but uh, there it is. So anyway, guys, that's my review for that Italian movie. Uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Also, be sure to come over to Killer Flicks, where we talk horror all day and every day on Fridays. We do Free For Fridays. Follow me at Drum Drums on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Letterboxd. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, and Drum Drum out.